This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1480, Why You Should Be Planning for 2019, Not 2018, part one, by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading blogs to you mostly, sometimes books, anything that I think will help you optimize your life. Today's post being from Benjamin Hardy, very popular writer on Medium, one of the most popular writers actually. And this was written a little while ago, just substitute the years and it'll still be a good article. And it's also a bit longer than usual, so I'll read the first half today and then finish the rest tomorrow. Now, before we get to the post, thank you to Babbel, which helps you learn a new language in a matter of weeks. Babbel takes the pain and frustration out of learning a new language, which I'm sure we've all experienced. I'll share more at the end of the episode. Right now, Babbel is offering our listeners three months free with a purchase of a three-month subscription with promo code OLD2019. Go to babbel.com and use promo code OLD2019 on your three-month subscription. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com, promo code OLD2019. Now let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Why You Should Be Planning for 2019, Not 2018, Part 1, by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. Before writing the first chapter of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling planned for seven years at Hogwarts. Harry Potter is one of the most read books of all time. Before creating the first Star Wars movie in the 1970s, George Lucas planned for at least six films and started at episode four rather than episode one. Almost 40 years later, the entire world continues to be excited with the release of a new Star Wars film. This would not be possible if Lucas hadn't thoughtfully and largely planned ahead. The principle is simple. Don't just plant a tree, plant an orchard. How different might Harry Potter have been if Rowling started the book without any intentions or plans beyond the first book? It may have just been a book about a boy who went to school and killed a bad guy. Perhaps at the conclusion of that story, Rowling might or might not have decided to write a sequel. Yet by beginning with the end in mind, Rowling was able to direct and position the first book much differently. The first book, although amazing in itself, was a means to an end, clearly leading the reader to the next book. Not only that, but by having a long-term objective, Rowling was able to create a much bigger story. She was able to foreshadow to things the reader wouldn't learn about for sometimes several years. But she planted those seeds early and thoughtfully, and as a result, each book was a continuation of the next, rather than several disconnected and random stories. Similarly, Consider how different Star Wars would have been had Lucas created one film without planning what would come next or before. Vader may have just been the bad guy, not to Luke's father. Very few people live like this. You are the writer of your own narrative, yet how often do you plan each year based on what you intend to do during the next year or the one after that? What if, like Rowling, you were living this year based on what you intend to do in one, three, and five years from now? It's all in the setup. Goals are means, not ends. Everything you do is positioning. Are you positioning yourself to do amazing things in one, three, or five years from now? I can already hear your mental wheels spinning. But you can't plan for the future. The real world is in Hogwarts. Obviously, the world is changing fast. You can't plan for everything. Hence, Tony Robbins has said, quote, stay committed to your decisions, but stay flexible in your approach, end quote. And that's the difference. Most people don't make committed decisions, which is why only 8% of people go on to accomplish their New Year's resolutions. In an interview between John Asaraf and Lewis Howes, Asaraf shared what his first mentor taught him about goal setting. After setting his goals in several areas of his life, like health, spirituality, finances, relationships, service, etc., and for one, three, five, and 25 years out, Asaraf's mentor asked him, are you interested in achieving these goals? or are you committed? To which Asaraf responded, what's the difference? His mentor responded, quote, if you're interested, you come up with stories, excuses, reasons, and circumstances about why you can't or why you won't. If you're committed, those go out the window. You just do whatever it takes, end quote. Clearly, Asaraf's life probably isn't exactly how he planned it to be when he set those goals in 1982 at the age of 19. However, I'm confident those goals propelled him to where he is today. He was playing and planning a much bigger game than most people and writing a much different story. The science doesn't lie. If psychological science has found anything in the past 30 years, it's that people with high self-efficacy and an internal locus of control 
radically outperform others. Self-efficacy is your belief in your own ability to achieve your goals, think confidence. Internal locus of control is a belief that you, not external circumstances, determine the outcomes of your life. External locus of control is a belief that factors outside of you determine the outcomes of your life. The majority of the population have low self-efficacy and an external locus of control. According to several research studies, people with these traits don't set challenging goals, don't take on leadership roles, experience learned helplessness, have a higher chance of depression and anxiety, lack motivation, have a pessimistic view of the future, have low job satisfaction and low job performance, have low life satisfaction, have low engagement in both work and life, have greater health problems and experience more stress. The list goes on, you get the point. Reverse everything on that list for people with high self-efficacy and an internal locus of control. The greatest lie postulated today. Is the world changing fast? Yes. Are factors outside of your control unpredictable? Yes. Do you have little control over the outcomes of your own life? No. I don't care who the president of the United States is. You can prosper or perish in either case, and it's not the president who decides that. But herein lies the greatest lie being pushed today, that you are not in control of what happens in your own life. Billionaire Peter Thiel has said, quote, indefinite attitudes to the future explain what's most dysfunctional in our world today. Process trumps substance. When people lack concrete plans to carry out, They use formal rules to assemble a portfolio of various options. This describes Americans today. In middle school, we're encouraged to start hoarding extracurricular activities. In high school, ambitious students compete even harder to appear omnicompetent. By the time a student gets to college, he's spent a decade curating a bewilderingly diverse resume to prepare for a completely unknowable future. Come what may, he's ready for nothing in particular, end quote. What would happen if you hired a construction manager to build your house and they said, Don't bother giving us a blueprint of the design you want. After all, you can't really plan for anything, so I'm not exactly sure how your house will turn out. When you build a house, you have a plan. You follow the plan and you follow principles such as mathematical laws. Thus, you're not surprised by the outcome. In other words, you don't expect crooked walls that don't line up. You don't expect to have the bathroom where you intended the kitchen. Dr. Stephen R. Covey has taught, quote, mental creation always precedes physical creation, end quote. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Why You Should Be Planning for 2019, Not 2018 by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. I'll finish the rest for you tomorrow. Thanks once again to our friends at Babbel. Learning a new language doesn't have to be a painful experience, as you'll find out with Babbel. Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent as you sharpen your skills with real-life conversations. Babbel is available as an app or online. Your progress will be synced across all devices, which makes it easy for you to continue from wherever you left off in your previous lesson. So watch how much progress you'll make with daily 10 to 15-minute lessons. Perfect for you as a listener of this show. And it's a great skill to take up. Try it out. Right now, Babbel is offering our listeners three months free with the purchase of a three-month subscription with promo code OLD2019. Go to babbel.com and use promo code OLD2019 on your three-month subscription. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com, promo code OLD2019. And I'll leave it there for today. Hope you're having a great day and I'll be back tomorrow on New Year's Eve where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.